As a video editor, you want to have the coolest tools to be able to have on your projects, right? Well, this glitch effect is way different than anything you've probably seen and something you're definitely going to want to know how to do. Dope. What's poppin' everybody? My name is Danny Matthews. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're gonna be talking about data moshing glitching. Now, real quick, what is data moshing? Because not many people know what data moshing is, nor seen what data moshing can do. So, real quick, here's a video of data moshing. And basically, what's happening in this data mosh is information for each hard cut is actually being pulled away. So the information is just merging together. So the clips just look like it's just meshing together and then warping into something else. When in reality, we just took out the information, so the software gets confused and thus creates this effect. In this tutorial, I'm gonna tell you how to download, install, and create this effect on either a PC or a Mac. Unfortunately, Mac is way more difficult than if it was on a PC. So let's jump into it. First, we'll start with PC. Super, super simple, and I wish Mac was as simple, but they're not. But it is still possible to download this to a Mac computer. What we're looking at is, you're gonna come over here to a Vitamax files. I went ahead and put the link in the description for you guys to go ahead and just go for it. And you are gonna want to have this version, 2.5.6. Now, I know that there's an older version that will still work, but any version after this doesn't work, apparently. I actually have never tried it, but apparently nothing past the 2.5.6. So never update it and just keep it to this version. Go ahead and download file right here, the .exe. Go ahead and just click on it and it's gonna download and then you're gonna run it. All you're gonna do is go ahead and run it, install it um, on your computer, and then you're good to go. All you have to do is open up the program and then you're good to go for the installment. Now, if you're on a Mac computer, which is a lot more difficult to do, you wanna follow these steps very closely because it gets confusing. So basically, if you're on a Mac, what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and download this Windows64.zip. Make sure you get the zip file, otherwise you won't be able to do this. So go ahead and download the zip file. And then once that's downloaded, go ahead and come over here to this next URL, which I've also linked in the description. This is all of the steps to download and install it to your Mac computer. Now this can get a little bit confusing, so again, you can go through these instructions and to watch this step by step. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my finder just next to it, that way it's easier to get through. And so this is gonna talk about how to do all of these steps. So first we're gonna to go to this first one. So it says to go ahead and download this file, which we already did, so awesome. So for step two, what we're gonna do is come over here to our system settings. If you have a newer version of Mac uh, and OS, then you're gonna have this layout as the phone and this one's a little bit different. So to find this, go ahead and just type in services. Over here, we're gonna see keyboard shortcuts and we're actually gonna go ahead and click on that. Now we have this right here, it says services. Go ahead and click on the services and then under files and folder, go ahead and hit that carrot and then we're gonna have new terminal at folder and new terminal at tab at folder. Both of these are gonna be selected and then when you're done, go ahead and hit done. So now going to number three, we're gonna go ahead and open up our terminal. So this is just opening up your basic terminal. If you can't find it, you can either do uh, under your spotlight search or command space and then type in terminal. If you can't find it still, you can come over here to applications, utilities, and then under here, we're gonna go all the way down to where it says terminal. Go ahead and just double click that. We're gonna go ahead and open up our terminal. So we have a terminal here, and this is where we have to pay very close attention to what we're doing. So what we have to do is disable gatekeeper by typing this, and just go ahead and copy and paste this into your terminal right over here. Now make sure when you're done with this that you do enable it, which they do give you the command right here, which is master enable. For now, go ahead and disable it, and let's go ahead and ask for your password. Go ahead and just type in your password to your computer to like log in and that's where your password is going to be. Next what's going to happen is we have to install homebrew. Now this for me was a lot more difficult to install because there's certain steps that you have to pay very close attention to that are not on here. So it says in here to follow the instructions on how to install homebrew. What we're going to do is go ahead and open up this link and we're going to go ahead and do that. So what do we have to do? What does homebrew do? Install homebrew. So we're going to go ahead and just copy this install. There's a copy right here where you just click it and it automatically copies it. Come over here and paste it into your terminal with command V and hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and do all this and it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna continue? Go ahead and press enter. Once it goes ahead and does this, it's gonna run for a little bit and then it's done. So once it's done, it actually says right here what the next steps are, which it doesn't tell you in the instruction manual, but you have to actually go ahead and do these next steps. For these next steps, it says right here to type all of these different things and it's actually very confusing when you look at it. All you have to do is right here it says echo and then it has this command right here type that right 
down here. Just the evil all the way down to the end with the ending parenthesis. I'm gonna go ahead and enter into the system of homebrew. That way you can go ahead and install the wine stable. You need wine stable in order to open up any Windows file. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and hit enter. Once you type that in, it is going to say absolutely nothing, which is what you want to happen. And then you're gonna come over here and copy this next line, number six, and go ahead and paste it in here and press enter. It's gonna go ahead and install the wine stable. Now, look, if I already installed it, so it's asking him to reinstall it, but I've already installed it. If you do not type this command in right here before running this, you're going to run into the most annoying time trying to figure out what's wrong. So make sure you go ahead and type this in. So I've already installed it, but I'm going to go ahead and just continue on with this just to show you guys what to do next. It will say that install is complete and then you're good to go. Next, what you have to do is go to the folder that has your file. So what I suggest doing is come over here to where you ever you downloaded that original file, the zip folder and go ahead and drop it into a folder that you can easily access so go ahead and i'm just gonna go drop it into uh let's see drop it into background hello all right so i have dropped it into background so what we're gonna do is after you drop it in here is go ahead and unzip it by double clicking it. it is going to unzip it and you see that you have all the contents in here so after you drop the file in here and you have unzipped it what you're gonna to wanna to do next is right click on this folder that you just unzipped. Right click it, go down to where it says new terminal app folder. Go ahead and open this. Now, what we're gonna do here is go back to where, where we had this command here, where I have it in red. Go ahead and copy that and bring it over to this new, this new terminal up here. Go ahead and paste that, hit enter. It's gonna say absolutely nothing, which is what you want to do. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is come over here to step number seven, copy that and go ahead and paste it right here. Press enter. It's gonna give you all of these warning failures, yada yada, and then bam, you're gonna have a Vitamax pop up and you have the file open, finally. I know, so much time, it's ridiculous. Anywho, you have this whole thing open, make sure you don't close this terminal, but you can go ahead and close the terminal underneath it. So we have this open here and we can go ahead and get out of this. Now again, for Mac, there's another step that you have to do if you wish to export this video. Now Mac, you did all of the hard steps of getting through everything. All you have to do from here on out is the last step I just showed you. We're going to the folder, right clicking, open up a terminal and pasting this command and then going ahead and pasting this command and it'll open up for you. So you don't have to do all those steps over again. Now Mac, there's still one more step after you finish this whole entire exporting out of this software and back into any other like software like Adobe or DaVinci or Final Cut. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that when we're doing the tutorial on how to create this data moshing. So now starts the real fun tutorial that is actually what we want to do and this is how we're gonna be doing it. Now it's up to you if you wanna leave this open, I'm just gonna leave it open because it's easier instead of going through the steps again. But go ahead and open up whatever your editor of choice is. Mine is Adobe Premiere. You can do this again in Adobe, Final Cut, DaVinci. You can do it in Sony. Uh, I think that's Sony Vegas. Uh, you can do it in Final Movie Cut movie, iMovie. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a project that I already created this in. I just took a quick video of my ledger and just to show you guys what it looks like and show you how this can be done. So what I did is I took two clips that I just recorded myself. So I have two clips here, me just holding it, putting my hand on it, and then me on top of it with the ledger already in my hand and just flipping it over. So what I wanted it to do is to go ahead and just show it right when my hand touches it's going to go ahead and mosh into this clip of me rotating my hand around with the ledger in it almost like it just went through right before i start turning it let's do it right here so i make my cuts right there and i'm just going to end the video here so what you're going to do is go ahead and export this file for yourself in whatever format you need it to be i'm going to go ahead and just drop it into this main thing I'm gonna go ahead and just call it ledger, save it, go ahead and export the file. And this is where you can get a little bit creative with it. You can create different types of cuts um, and I'm gonna show you what you can do at each cut um, in the software that we just downloaded to make it look really cool. We can get a little bit creative with it uh, on this. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and open up our uh, Vitamax, beautiful, beautiful software. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and import the file into here, just drag and drop it, super simple. So go over to wherever you just saved your video. So we have Ledger Data MP4, go ahead and drag and drop. It is gonna ask you, H264 detected if the file uses beep, beep, blah, 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 blah. You say no, now you wait. And then it's gonna ask for not up to date. You're gonna say no, because you don't want it to be up to date. 
that's the whole trick here, guys. Come on. All right, so what you're gonna do next is we are gonna go ahead and create this into a video. So we're gonna go ahead and go to um, where it says M, oops, sorry, XFID. So the MPEG4 ASP XFID. Now, this is something I'm gonna tell you about, just give you a little bit of understanding of data moshing and what it is. What it is, is there's a bunch of frames here that we have, as you can see down here, it says frame type. We have P's, we have um, B frames, and we have I frames. I frames are the main cut frames and those are what we're gonna actually be removing to create this really cool effect. Now we have a bunch of P frames and a bunch of B frames. We're gonna, to create this effect, what we have to do is take out all of the B frames right now. So when we come over here to config, come over here to frame maximum consecutive B frames. We're gonna go ahead and just hit zero. Hit okay, it's gonna get rid of all of our B frames for us. And when we export this, what we're gonna do is come over here to file, save video, save the video and come over here and drop it to where you know you can find it. Documents is the easiest place for a Mac to find it. If you're in a Windows, it's gonna be a lot easier to find it. So I come over here into my documents and I just drop it in all of my documents. Like you can see, I have it right here. What we're gonna do is just come over here and save it. So go ahead and save it as Ledger. I already have Ledger, so I'm gonna go ahead and create Ledger 2 and it's a .avi. Go ahead and save it. And it's gonna go ahead and do its exporting. What it's doing right now is removing every single B frame that has ever existed. And once it says it's done, it's done. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and open up the file that we just created, which is the ledger2.avi, open it up, and bam, there it is. What we're gonna do is come over here and hit copy. It's very important that you hit the word copy here. Once we hit copy, what we're gonna do now is the next step of the tutorial. So on here, what we're gonna do is, if you have a PC, it's a little bit easier than if you have a Mac, unless you have a PC keyboard connected to a Mac, to a Mac, which I do, so it's gonna be easier. What we have here is a bunch of iframes now, a bunch of iframes and a bunch of P frames. If you hit up and down on your keyboard, it is going to cut between iframes and only iframes. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna go ahead and delete them, but we're gonna go ahead and leave the first one. So we need the first one to have the information. We're gonna to go to the second one. So we're gonna hit A, hit right on your keyboard, hit B, and go ahead and hit delete. Now on Mac, you can't do that. You're gonna to have to hit delete manually. So what you have to do is create that in and out point and come over here to edit and hit delete. Really annoying, but you want a cool, cool effect. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next one, which we have this iframe. We're gonna go ahead and create our in point, go to the right one, put our out point, delete it, go to the next iframe. And I think that's the only iframe we have. So that's all the iframes that we have in this and that's it. So what we're gonna do next is go ahead and save this again. So go ahead and hit save, save video. Go ahead and call it what you need it. I call it ledger three. .avi. Go ahead and hit save. Do you need a smart copy to enable it? Just hit no, because no, we don't want one. I don't even know what it is, nobody cares. So file ledger three has been successfully saved. Hit okay, and that is it. What we're gonna do is go ahead and if you have a PC, then you guys are totally fine. I'm pretty sure you guys are totally fine. If you're not, then this next step actually helps you. If you have a Mac, you are not totally fine. What you have to do is go to wherever you saved your file, which I saved in documents. It's ledger3.avi. Now, no editor will read this right now, and my own computer won't even read the ABI file. It won't open it, it won't do anything like that. So what we have to do is convert this. So now we go over to, come over here to our browser, and we're gonna go to the final link that I have in the description. It's called online, it's called online convert. Come over here to online convert, come over here to where it says video converter, and we're gonna go ahead and convert this into an MP4. So now we're in the MP4, all you have to do is drag and drop that AVI file that you created. Drag it and drop it into this folder here, and you can see that it completed the whole thing. Don't worry about any of these settings, hit start, and it's gonna process your file. Hmm. Now, all you gotta do is download it, and bam, that is it. You are complete. So we have this file in our folder, and we go bam, oh, look at that. We got our data moshing happening all over here. And what you can do is go ahead and bring it into your editor and start getting a little bit cool with it. So I can show you an edit that I did over here to give you an idea of the things that you can start to do. So. So you can see here, we can actually data mosh multiple cuts and it works the same concept. You're just removing every single iframe except the very first iframe. And that's how you're gonna be creating this cool data moshing effect. Um, I have seen some issues with like the beginning clips. You can see my hand is already on it. 
it just freaks the frick out. I don't know what's happening with it. What I did to avoid that with my first one was I just took my original clip that I had and I used that and then you can see I do a little bit of a glitch, like a glitch zoom effect here and then it goes into the data moshing. So I just used the original clip to show, to keep it clean and then did like a glitch effect cut into the data moshing, if that makes sense. So that is some things you can do. You can get really creative with it. And that is the extremely long version of how to create this, but there's not a tutorial on here of how to do it for Mac and for PC, where it can show you step-by-step -step process. So I wanted to create that for you guys so you know how to do it and avoid all the frustration that I had to go through to figure out how to get this software onto my Mac. Peace.